This week, we take an inside look at THS Brew, who takes a new spin on coffee and creamer. At the first community forum meeting discussing the potential of a modified calendar, citizens, parents, and students got to hear from our superintendent, Dr. Piku, and voice their thoughts on the best decision for Tupelo schools. We also highlight a beloved teacher who was just recently named Tupelo High School Teacher of the Year. Welcome back to another episode of WTHS News. I'm Thomas Roper. The Tupelo Public School District has discussed the possibility of a year-round school schedule. Shelby has more on how this will affect our community. If you have articles you'd like to share with the group, send them to Greg. A modified schedule will consist of a shortened summer with multiple breaks throughout the year. Dr. Piku says this will allow students to have remediation and catch up on classes. The intent of a modified schedule is to provide intercessions throughout the school year, sessions of time where students can either have a break or participate in remediation or enrichment activities during the school year. So it takes the summer uh, vacation that's currently at 60 days and reduces it to 30 and then disperses those days into different periods during the year to give more breaks during the school year. This could be a big change for Tupelo schools like Tupelo High School. THS principal Dr. Thomas believes that community forums are essential to make the best decision for students. I think now, right now, is a good opportunity to just start researching and see what would work best for Tupelo public school districts as well as Tupelo High School. I am thankful that Dr. Piku and his staff are creating forums that can involve the community and parents and students so that we all can come together and um, see, get the information and see what's best for our district. A modified schedule will not only affect students, but teachers and staff of Tupelo schools. Ms. McCullough is a THS teacher who previously worked at a school that followed a modified calendar. The modified calendar, what it does is we are still in school the exact same amount of days, but our breaks are scattered throughout the school year where we essentially get a break after every term, and it is awesome. I think for teachers and students, it will definitely help just giving those breaks to give us time to breathe and recuperate and come back ready for the next term. Students are the main factor in the decision regarding a modified calendar. The adjustment of a new schedule could affect them in many ways. I feel like it'll affect me po positively because like sometimes I don't come to school because like I need a break and I feel like if the school just gave me their break, my attendance would be better and the grades would be better. I feel like other students will feel the same way. The community forum meeting hosted by Dr. Piku in the school district allows citizens to come out and get an idea of what exactly a modified calendar will look like. I think it'll give them a better school system because the students will be able to progress at a faster pace and learn more and forget less. I think that's a good thing. All of my children are out of school, but because there is a concern for other parents who have children in the school system, and it, it can affect them in more ways than we know tonight. You know, just everyday living, you know, getting up, having a daycare center to take them to if they're in that age group, or having a teenager at home for three weeks. The decision of a modified calendar is still underway with the school board, and a final decision is set to be made in the next two years. The community forums will continue to hear from citizens of Tupelo and to make the best decision for Tupelo schools. I'm Shelby Spain, WTHS Media. Thanks, Shelby. This possible new procedure would affect not only our students and staff, but our community as well. The next meeting regarding this possibility will be December 12th at Church Street School, and we will have more updates soon. In other news, an English teacher here at THS received the honor of being named Tupelo High School Teacher of the Year. Albany has more on this special announcement. I'm definitely getting to know the students and just having that relationship with them, seeing them each day. The Teacher of the Year Award is decided on the teacher's vote. Ms. Chelsea Wilson explains her feelings about being chosen. Um, really humbling, a great honor, um, kind of a lot of pressure because now I'm like, well, I can't do that because <laughs> I got voted Teacher of the Year, but um, it's really a great honor. 
Tupelo High School's principal, Dr. Thomas, sees the hard work and dedication that Ms. Wilson puts in with her students each and every day. So I think Ms. Wilson is a, what I would call a quiet storm. She doesn't say much, she's not very loud, but when she does speak and interact with her kids, it is very powerful. The teaching style might be different for every teacher, but Malaysia Smith and Lacey Water shares the advantages of Miss Wilson. She doesn't move too fast, but like, she moves at like a steady speed and makes sure everybody's on the same level. My favorite thing about Miss Wilson would be the way that she is very understanding and how she teaches, I would assume. Teaching is not the only thing that she excels at. Miss Wilson is also the founder of the Real Readers Conference and she serves on the THS AEE committee. Miss Wilson has positively impacted THS with the relationship with her students and her teaching style. She has truly made a splash in the teaching industry. I'm Albany Knight and this is WTHS News. Thanks Albany. Receiving Teacher of the Year is an outstanding accomplishment. Speaking of accomplishments, Mrs. Krause's dream has finally came true with opening THS Brew as her new business. The personal finance students have been working full speed ahead with this shop serving all teachers and staff here on campus. Take it away, Riley. Miss Katie Krauss is a teacher at Tupelo High School and has started a coffee brew company with her third block class. This is for teachers and staff only. The shop just recently opened has already gotten a lot of attention. Miss Krauss tells us how she wrote a grant to get it all started. I have done projects in the past where kids can create a business but never actually run a business and I have a lot of kids that are entrepreneurial and want to know how to run a business. So I wrote a grant so that we would have a business for my business kids to run. Deasia Denson is one of the students in the class and she knows the company will help with her future. I think this is good on my future because like, I can put it on my resumes for college and stuff and it'll just teach me like lifely skills that I need to know about business. Ms. Krause hopes the same as Deasia for the rest of her students for their future. I had so many that wanted to start businesses or learn how to start and run a business and I've had several successful after. Um, so that plus I wanted student interaction and for them to be able to put something on their resume. With all the work that it takes when opening a business, Ms. Krause tells us exactly how long it took to open their company. Well, I wrote the grant last year. We had to submit them before December and then we got the money uh, September. So, and then to get all, the, all of the equipment and stuff in, so I would probably say a month. THS Brews open Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 7 to 7.50, located here in Study Room 1 in J Building. The students and Ms. Cross herself hopes that the company will stay alive for many years. I'm Riley Robinson, WTHS News. Thanks, Riley. It is so inspiring getting to see these students learn different aspects involving entrepreneurship. If you're interested in being a part of the Business Fundamentals class, be sure to see Ms. Cross for more information. On another note, our football team just competed in the first round of playoffs with a win against Lewisburg. Aaliyah has more updates in this week's sports. Hi, I'm Aaliyah Cooper. Welcome back to this week's edition of Sports Media. Last Tuesday, three of our Golden Wave athletes signed and will continue their journey to play baseball in college. Colin Washington and Jacoby Smith signed to Northeast Community College and Jonathan Rogers signed to the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. We can't wait to see what the future holds for these young athletes. Last Saturday, the Lady Wave finished with a score of 88-47 to against Clinton. On Tuesday, basketball traveled to Center Hill and the girls also plan to play tomorrow in the biggest real shootout. The girls were 55 to 35 and the boys were 74 to 66. Last Tuesday, the Lady Wave soccer team played against Hernando leaving with a 3 to 0 win for the girls. The boys lost 4 to 1 to Hernando and both teams beat the Soto Central in the sudden death shootouts. They will host the Tupelo Tourney at Ballard Park on Saturday, so be sure to come out and support the Wave. Bundle up and bring your hot chocolate because the weather will be in the low 50s. 
What a great year for the boys cross country team for placing second in the 6A state race. The girls finished fifth behind the second place performance by Brooklyn Morgan. Jaheem Bridges ran a 15 minute and 50 second 5K and placed third place. Congratulations to all these incredible athletes. Last Saturday, one senior made history here at Tupelo High School. Her name is Kayneel Mayfield. She won the first women's win and got the first pin of the season. One of my friends told me about it and it's the first time that we've had a wrestling team at Tupelo High School. So I just thought it'd be fun and I just wanted to do it. Tupelo High School is hosting their first home wrestling match tomorrow in the Woodfuller Gym at 11 o'clock. This will be the first home meet in 36 years. The wrestling team isn't the only ones making history, our football team is too. In honor of Veterans Day, the JROTC did a special tribute before the game to honor those who have served in the military. Alexis Lisey has more. Our football team is currently 12-0 as they played Lewisburg last Friday and won 42 to nothing. This is the first time Tupelo has made it this far since 2016. The game started with junior Quaid Middlebrooks making the first touchdown of the game with five minutes and two seconds left in the first quarter. Then he came back into the same second quarter with 11 minutes and 11 seconds left. Tyreek took us 20 to zero, scoring the third touchdown for our Golden Wave with just 43 seconds left before halftime. Jaden Hill and Deaton then got us seven more points ahead with 219 left in the third quarter. After sophomore Chris Ivy got subbed in, he quickly made the last touchdown of the game, bringing our team 42 to zero. Defensive coach Chris Shoup gives us a rundown on the game. Survive and advance. Um, that's the only thing that matters. It doesn't matter how many points you give up. It doesn't matter how many points you score. The, the only thing that matters is advancing to the next round and giving yourself a chance to play the next week. Um, that's all that matters. I look at it like chess. Um, we want to put our players and our pieces where they want to attack us at. So we want to make sure that we're putting players um, that are going to putting the players in the best position possible to make plays. They ended the game with 398 total yards and will rematch Madison Central for the second round of playoffs. Tristan and Elijah tell us how they're preparing. Uh, well, this is really just a warm-up game to get ready for all the other teams that we play. A couple of ups and downs, but you know, we're going to get that right through practice throughout the weeks. Um, I feel like we played okay, but we could have been better in a lot of places because we played a little average and we better than what we did tonight. I think this is a lesson learned for me and the team because we can be better than what we did tonight and we got to be better this week. The current question is, will the game plan change or stay the same for the rematch against one of our biggest competitors? Although they are currently 8-3, and three, they've won their past four games in a row against Germantown, Murrah, Oxford, and South Vanilla. Wide receiver Isaiah Spencer is the one to look out for with 60 yards per game for Madison Central's team. Make sure you come out and support the Wave in their second round of playoffs. Thanks for tuning in with me. I'm Alexis Lisi. Thanks, Alexis. Kickoff starts at 7, so be sure to come out and support the Wave. I'm Aaliyah Cooper, WTHS Sports Media. Thanks, Aaliyah. Our Golden Wave football team has many achievements to be proud of this season, and the holidays are just around the corner. Tupelo High School Student Council has partnered with the Salvation Army to help our very own high school students have an amazing Christmas. There are 27 angels in all. There is a card on the THS Christmas tree with information about the teens. This is to help us know what they love, need, and wish for. Our Tupelo students requested items such as earbuds, hoodies, sketchbooks, blankets, and more. The deadline to return the items is December 16th. That's all we have for this week. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And here's a few highlights from the Fall Structure Showcase. Thank you so much for watching this week's edition of WTHS News and have a great Thanksgiving break.